If you're into really fast decks, this could be the one for you. Belmore Battle Mage Captain looks to give prowess essentially to your entire team and trample. I think this is the strongest version this ability has ever been on a legend. The one before that's Adelie, so it's three mana and it gave this kind of buff to your wizards but not trample so this is so much better the way this deck works is essentially you want to get lots of small creatures out like one and two drops stuff like ascendant spirit symmetry sage and then pump the whole team using innocence and sorcery so there's quite a lot in the deck and a nice way to kind of cover both bases is by using adventures So I've got, put a fair few in here, and it doesn't really matter how powerful they are because they're just basically two cards in one. So even the latest ones from the the D and D set, like Scry One Draw a card, is great for two mana because then it becomes a creature you can cast later on. It doesn't really matter how good the creature is; it's just anything, anything that you can get out to the field early. You've even got this cool hard card to give something double strike. Obviously, when Belmore's going to pump your team loads and loads, giving something double strike is epic. And then also being able to cast it for the equipment is fantastic as well. Even something as simple as Merchant of the Veil, vale, discard, draw, bone crusher, two damage, ban something, give something power boost. These are all invaluable because it's almost like having twice the number of cards in your hand, which is something you really need to think about when making a deck like this, because the deck crumbles to control any board wipes that take your creatures down. You're going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble here. So. Being able to just get the most amount of value from your cards is going to be super important. That's why stuff like Leers in here to replay spells from your graveyard. You've got Throws of Chaos, which is super cool. It doesn't do anything by itself, but it's got Cascade and Retrace. So you cast it, you get two triggers if you hit another instant or sorcery, which pumps your team twice, and you can also cast it from your graveyard by discarding a land card. Think outside the box, stuff like this, really effective, pumping your team, and you should be able to sneak a few early wins in, and the deck is super fun to play super aggressive check out the deck list below uh, give it a go tell me what you think and don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel it really helps boost the algorithm helps spread my content and don't forget you can always donate if you appreciate what i've been doing here via my kofi and that's in the link below as well let's get into the games Ooh, okay opponent goes first with nahiri so they're going to be an equipment deck I actually kind of like this hand, even though we don't have the blue, but we've got a lot of red. The fact they keep making blockers is irritating. Ah, there we go. There's the blue source we needed. Mox Amber's pretty good as well. So next turn we could have potentially... 2 free mana. Ingenious Smith enters... Veal Artifact. Okay. So... We get the young Pyromancer out first, I think. Just because it makes blockers, which is kind of good, and or attackers for their Planeswalker. Whenever they, whenever one of our artifacts enter the battlefield, put a count on this Smith. She looks epic as well. The artwork for that is really cool. Um, Danatha as well, which makes, oof, brutal. Okay. Target could just get to double strike. That could be a little combat trick there. Okay, so this is probably a good time for Balmore and Mox Amber. Plus four, equip five. And so do we go? Yeah, we'll go for the smaller. Yeah, I'm gonna be greedy. You, you kind of have to be in this style of deck, um, because. You, we're very low to the ground, so if we don't get all of our synergy out, then we're only getting a few bits and bobs. But I mean, that was definitely a greedy play, I'm not gonna lie. Especially the board wipe, sort of one in mind. Okay, that's gonna be. It's gonna be good, but. So they can equip this for one less. That's four to equip, and that's one to equip. So they hit us, we mill 10 and also they get a wolf. Okay. But luckily we're in the colours to block, so they're probably thinking about doing the same thing as us. Do they put more things on the field? Or do they just equip the things they have? Obviously Danatha with the sword's gonna be pretty huge. Vig first strike vision life link. 4-4. Four, four. Pro green, pro blue. Yeah, it's funny. When you change your deck 
the algorithm gives you matchups that are like kind of in a similar vein, but who knows? Maybe it's a coincidence, but this feels very fast as well. So if we get all of our things to survive, we're going to get some really nice synergies. So they're attacking with... Okay, yeah, I'm not going to block. Feels like there's a trick there somewhere. Rip apart. Interesting. Okay, that is annoying. But we can also do some things here. It's a shame because that that was the thing that was giving us uh, more bodies. More bodies. Let's draw a card here. I'd like to hit a land drop. Okay, bounce spell. So we can bounce something and kill something. I mean, that is okay, I suppose. So we want to kill this and then bounce the Danatha. Yeah, that's fine. We're also making the Smoldering Egg closer to becoming a dragon as well. Yeah, it's a real shame we lost the young Pizzy there. <laughs> Would definitely be his rapper name, the older uh, young pyromancer. So he got rid of a couple of temporary threats. Esper Sentinel. That's annoying. Although we could kill that with the Heartfire Emulator. When this flips, which is when it has seven counters on it due to the total CMC of spells cast. You can start killing stuff by casting spells, and that's going to be pretty good if we can get there, but... <clears throat> if they equip this with the sword, it will be a 3-3, three, three, and then we have to pay 3 mana every time we want to resolve a spell. Not which spell. So it's going to be worth killing this, I think, with something like a braid. Danitha comes out first. Land is surprisingly useful here. Do you know what? I'm just going to kill it with this. I don't. I don't want them to draw anything. Get rid, please. And then. So. Yeah, this is a scary thing. Like I can embrace the Danatha. But the here we just allows stuff to be equipped. Yeah, I think I'm just going to attack. Yeah, I, th I think the sword is scarier than a Danatha, to be honest. I know Danatha can give them life, but the sword makes as many blockers as they can hit us with. And that is what will stop us, and ultimately. Nahiri by herself isn't that strong either, although she can minus three to deal damage to something. Okay, equipping the sword. Okay, actually, yeah, so we'll let them equip it. And then when they attack, I'll break the sword. Holy crap. Double strike. Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty disgusting. That is disgusting. And they can equip that as well. So in hindsight, killing Danitha would have been good. But still, it's the swords that make us... Scary. Lion Sash. Oh, that's gross. They can uh, exile cost from our graveyard. That is actually really gross. Man, why do they have to get this? They got like the perfect cards here. So they want to exile Think Twice or they want to exile Silent Departure? Oh, they're getting with a young Pizzy, okay. Oh no, wrong mode, wrong mode, wrong mode. That was scary. Let's kill the sword here. So don't forget, once the egg transforms, we can start killing stuff as well with the triggers here.
And we might as well block just to save a bit of life there. Okay. Land is surprisingly good. So we can use the Silent Departure to bounce the Lion Sash. Or we can think twice. Actually, I think... Yeah, this is better because it will, this will flip the egg. Yeah, this is actually way better. And then now we can kill the Lion Sash. Yeah, this works out pretty well. We give the Ash Mouth Dragon double strike. So then we can also kill the Lion Sash, which protects the Silent Departure. Oh my god, there's so many different routes here. And then we go over the top. That's a lot of that's a lot of damage. Down to nine. So they can kill the Ashbath Dragon if they minus. So it deals damage to creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of warriors or equipment. So now they can deal six. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a real shame. Ugh, that's pretty gross. Pretty gross. And they gain life as well. Double its power. Okay, so this, the axe is going to be good. Double its power. So three, four, five, four, they need an extra. So I think we just kill the Nahiri for now. I mean, our life total is at risk here. I tire of destruction. But I kind of want to... Yeah, k killing that... Oh no, they can just do it again. Which mode are they going to go for? I must calm the anger that dwells within. This is going to be interesting. So they can kill this here. So that will deal... 6... But I think I'm going to exile my own creature. And that way I get a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Okay. So now we have... Interesting. It's got... This has got... First strike, double strike. It's 1, 2, 3, 4... Four, five, six, five. So if we do this, we've got three mana open. Ugh. This is rough. I think we we set up the board for the following turn. Yeah, let's swing in here. I mean, if they... They can trade. If they want one thing. We'll lose one thing, they'll lose one thing. Okay, they just let her die. Cool. I'm surprised, actually. Am I surprised? Not sure. At this point, she's just a, a removal spell. What's the equip cost of this? This is equip two, so we've got four, five, six, seven. So we do have enough... Interesting. They're going to have to be careful though, because we're going to be able to have double damage. So what is this? Menace, Trample, First Strike, Vision, Lifelink. Okay, well, I'm not going to block that then. They get a card. So we're definitely going to bounce this to their hand with the Silent Departure. Oh wow, okay. Get rid of that, that's stupid amount of lifelink. Pump the team. Do we have lethal here? So this gives something plus two power, or this doubles the power of something. Let's just attack and then use the Rim Rock Knight as a little spicy thing here. See if that's enough. Interesting. Let's go for the 
boost. I think that's lethal, isn't it? Oh, wow. Almost perfect. Yeah, Rimrock Knight. Surprise, surprise from the standard of old days. Okay, we go first against Harold. We don't have any blue sources, but we've got a lot of red things we can do. So let's just risk this, I think. If we ever get a... If we do get a blue source, then this hand opens up super well. Whispering Wizard gives us 1-1s. One it only triggers once a turn, but it's decent. Interesting note about this card is how the creature's facing away. That's not normally the case for creatures. Normally, creatures are facing toward the viewer, interestingly enough. Um, if we go for... Yeah, I think we want to be able to play the Valakut Awakening later if needs be. It could be a risk, but if we do draw another red source, we can discard some stuff to get back potentially some lands, which is going to be important. Okay, so now we're going to have to play it. So it didn't pay off there, sadly. We'll attack and bluff some kind of buff. Okay, so they didn't block. And you'll give the health heart fire emulator. This is a nice way to kill something if we need to. Herald's got two toughness, and so is Incubation Druid. Binding. That is a super early binding there. Which is really going to hurt us. Okay, blue source. Yeah, I think we're going to go for the Lannery Storm. Swing in. And I think to slow them down, I'm going to kill the Druid because they slowed us down, so we'll repay the favor there. If we can keep the Lannery Storm alive, that would be nice because she's giving us access to more blue mana. Binding on turn three, damn. So good. Kill and ramp on turn three, very good. Toski, that is going to be very annoying to deal with. Okay. So. Let's go for the Whispering Wizard. So we can still attack. Yeah, that's fine. And then I feel like getting a blocker. So let's go for the Expressive Iteration here. It's not the best timing, but I want to be able to just blank the Tusky. Put one of them into the hand. I think we put the land in the hand here. And then we can cast this if we want to. I mean, it won't give us another token, but I guess we can just filter this island in the hopes of drawing something more powerful. Mox Amber. Okay, so we don't need to play that yet. We don't need to reveal that. So, to a tapped Tusky is good because it means we can get past. I mean, obviously they can have some kind of board wipe here. We don't want them to d draw cards, obviously. Fauna Shaman. It's another blocker. Looks like they've got another kill spell. Putrefy. They've been pretty lucky with the old uh, everything, haven't they? So, okay, so we're going to struggle here. Because we don't have any instants or sorceries. Although we do have Mox Amber, which does work with the Balmore. Oh yeah, this... Oh, it's non creature spell. That's even better. Okay, fine. Okay, we'll just empty our hand then. And we might as well swing in. It's unlikely they block. They could. Okay, sure. So they're happy with the cards in their hand. So now we just need some kind of good spell, really. Try to prevent them drawing anything here. Knowing my luck, they'll have the casualties of war. They're looking at all our permanents, so they probably do. 
It's always casualties. It's always casualties. It's every single game I face against Golgari players. Okay. That is a bit of a piss take, to be honest. Let's just swing in. 13. The fact this makes an extra attacker is pretty awesome, but yeah, that, that casualties, man. I don't get it. It's every single time. Look at the top seven cards. That's a lot of cards. And of course they get a Beast Whisperer as well. Okay. So we want to kill the Beast Whisperer, obviously. I mean, we're not doing that badly, it's just... Yeah, we are hugely set back there. So, this is a good attack. Okay. So, they're at two. Right, so they're going to have to have something good here. Board wipe. Can't be another casualty, surely. Maelstrom Pulse kills two tokens. Would you believe it? Talk about convenient there. Kill a thing, kill a thing, kill three things, kill a thing. So basically all we need is any instant or sorcery, right? Then we... We win. Midnight Clock. I think that's it then. Oh, it's lucky this has none creature. Goodness me. Cheeky buggers with all their amazing top decks. <laughs> Damn. I mean, we still won after all, but... Opponent goes first with Nalia Diani's a really, really powerful party deck. Um, which can just kill you out of nowhere using the trigger ability which puts counters on all of their creatures, as long as they have a full party. Now, they're in the colours with a lot of board wipe potential and all removal, so whatever we do, it's, it's going to be tricky here. We do have a lot of great cards in hand, though, so we've got protection, removal, and aggro, removal, kind of this does a lot of stuff. It defends, it flies over the top, and it kills stuff later on. And a clone spell. We clone Balmore. Things are looking really good here. I guess going for the egg first is fine. Bit of a non-bow in defense when it's got defender with the power boost, but it's still a good defender. Cold Steel Heart. Do we want to bounce it? I don't think so. So let's go for Balmore and we can protect it with the old slip out the back. Phasing is great because board wipes will not touch it. Unless they kill it with another spell. Banishing Light, what's that going to go for? Balmore, yep. Yeah. So let's phase this guy. Pretty good. They've got a lot of mana there. Four, five, six. They can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Ooh, oh, Cascade Retrace. Okay. So I don't think they have a board wipe because they went for the Banishing Light. So let's clone the Balmore. Who would have thought it? Two Balmors. I mean, I'm actually kind of confident in saying if, if none of our fields are touched, which I think it will be. Oh, no. They had the board wipe as well as the banishing light. Interesting. Okay, let's go for this again then. Interesting that they went for the banishing light and then, you know, that's kind of strange. You'd think that you'd have restraint and save. Save that if you need to board up, but there you go. Wow, so many things there. Okay, so we're going to be able to do some things. Let's kill the Nalia, that's important. We get some mana back as well.
And yeah, I'm happy to cascade retrace. So we get something random here. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So let's give Balmor double strike to it on the turn. Seems pretty good. And then we can also kill the hero because we don't want that to create more dudes, do we? So this is going to be 10 damage. Down to 10. Pretty good. <laughs> That's a pretty good turn. Soul Warden. Okay, and I've got Narlia again. So what have they got? Rogue, Cleric, X. Okay, 23. Field of Ruin. So tempting to bounce the Narlia here. Let's go for the Faithless Looting first. That's an innocent play. Boost the power of our guys. Get rid of the land. Do we want this guy? No, I don't think so. I think we're getting closer to overthrowing them here. Five to equip. So we could just risk taking a big beat in here. Go for the two handed axe. And then equip this. So we can deal four over the top. It's going to be good for setting up later turns. Down to seven. So we could potentially win next turn. I mean, they do have Soul Warden and Anali, which pumps their team, but it doesn't, this doesn't gain them life. Yeah, that blood in the snow really put me off. Sometimes, this is going to sound weird, but people who don't play as optimally as you think can actually screw you over. Because obviously, they play the Vanishing Light, so in my head I'm thinking, hmm, obviously they don't have a board wipe, because why would they do that? And then, yeah, obviously it's completely, you know, change the outcome of the game. This doesn't have haste, does it? Four, four, six, eight, nine. Let's go for throws here. Just got a land. It's not often you want to keep a land, is it? Okay, young Primance is good because that lets us block. They do gain a life though. And then I think we're going to have to just bounce this. We get a blocker. That's really important. They get a life. Okay, but we're going to deal six here. Down to four. Can we survive a bit longer? Okay. Just attacking with Okay, fine. I think we can block here. Absorb some of the damage. Down to 10. So I think we have to win here. And that could be it, to be honest. The Rimrock Knight. Let's have a see. Give him a power boost. So they will go up to 6. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And that's lethal. Swinging over the top. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.